Time to buy a new dive mask? I've got some suggestions that might help you choose the correct mask to fit your face for a good diving experience. For years I've seen people come into the dive shop and they look at all the masks we have on display and they'll stand there and stare at them for a long time trying to find the one that has the features they think they want. Then they'll finally grab the mask and do something like this. And they've often been told that if they can suck the mask onto their face, if it seals, it's a good fit. Wrong. This is the best way to buy a mask that leaks and is really uncomfortable. The reason is that every face that walks in the door is a different size and a different shape. And every mask in the store is a different size and a different shape. But I can grab virtually every single mask, press it on my face, suck a little bit through my nose, it'll stay on my face. So that's not really a good criteria for choosing a mask. It's kind of like buying shoes. Have you ever walked into the shoe store and you tell the clerk what size shoes you wear and he brings out two, four, six different pairs of shoes and you try them all on and walk around in them, but you'll probably buy the one that's the most comfortable to you. And this is very much like choosing a dive mask. You have to try a bunch of masks and compare them. You can't pick up any one good ma mask and put it on your face and say, this one's good, because you don't really know what good is. Only by comparing and finding the best of all the masks that you've compared is going to get you the best fit for your face. Now, what you'd really like to do is find a mask which has a size, shape, and contour very much like the size, shape, and contour of your face. If you were to take that mask and just touch it to your face and it touched equally all the way around, you just have to think about inhaling a little bit and it will want to go seal. That's the important thing you want to watch for and compare from one mask to another. Now this mask that I showed you I could suck onto my face earlier, if I take this same mask and just touch it to my face without squishing it on, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a couple gaps up at the top here where it's not sealing. And that means I have to press harder or tighten up the mask strap in order to make it seal all the way around. Now this is a terrible fitting mask for me. I should never buy this mask. But you saw how easy I can suck it on my face when I press a little harder and suck a little harder. So in order to choose the best size mask to fit your face, you need to just take that mask and just touch it to your face without squishing it on. What I like to recommend is a procedure which I call a mask fitting process. And I've been doing this for a long time and I get a bunch of people that come back to the store the next day to say they've never had a mask that fits so well. Now everyone that works at a dive shop and sells masks has their own technique which they feel is the best to help you find the right mask. But I've had so many people comment that after going through my fitting process that this seems to work better than any other process they've gone through. And I've had a lot of people that say that they've been teaching scuba diving for many years and worked in dive shops, and they say this is maybe the best procedure they've ever seen. So let's give it a try, see if it works for you. First thing you want to do is grab a mask and turn the strap completely inside out so it's out of the way completely and doesn't fall in and get in the way. Now look how I'm holding the mask frame. See where my thumbs are on the bottom, hard frame, fingertips on the top, very light, delicate touch. Now tilt your head up a little bit. We're not looking up at the sky, we're just looking up a little bit. Take that mask and just drop it on the face. You notice how I'm just dropping it on without squishing it on? You want to remove your upper fingers before the mask even touches your face. The reason is that if you hang on with your upper fingers, you're probably going to do some of this stuff. And you're not allowed to press it on, you're not allowed to squish it on. If the mask is too narrow and doesn't want to just lay on your face properly, you will be tempted to do this and to get in, inside the mask. That's not acceptable either. The mask should just comfortably fall on your face and lay there. With my thumbs, I can position the mask up and down, left and right, in and out. You want to position the, the bottom of the mask up snug against your bottom of your nose. But you notice the upper fingers have not been doing anything. 
They're not squishing the mask on. Because my head is tilted back just slightly, the mask will just lay on my face. Now you want to suck in through your nose very slow and very gently. The goal is not to make the mask stick to your face. The goal is to find where it might be leaking. And if you suck in very slow and gently, you might notice some gaps where air slides in where it doesn't really fit your face properly. If you press a little harder and suck a little harder, that mask will seal to your face, but it's not a good fit for your face. You're forcing the fit. So when I take this mask and just drop it on my face, suck in slow and gently, I can feel the air streaming into those gaps up above that I talked about earlier. So this is not a, bad, a good mask for me to purchase, and it goes back up on the wall. And then we try another mask. Let's take this mask and turn the strap inside out, and take that mask and tilt the head up, and just drop it on the face, and suck in slow and gently. And that mask wants to seal to my face with almost no suction. It just sealed really smooth and easy, but I was sucking very slow and gently. Now let's say this mask is a contender. Let's go along and try all the other masks in the same manner. I want you to try even masks that you know you don't want to buy. You may say to yourself, I want a mask with a clear skirt. I don't want a black skirt because it feels kind of tunnel vision. Try the black skirt also. I want you to learn what a good fit feels like even by trying masks that you don't want to buy. Now, the key is notice how easy it seals and compare that one point with all the masks. The mask that seals the easiest with the least amount of suction without squishing it on is probably the best choice for you. That means that it fits your face with the same contours. Now, we're going to do a second test after you've done this gentle suction fitting with all the masks up here. The second test is very important because sometimes people will buy a face mask finding the hard frame will hit their nose or their forehead or their eyebrows when they swim underwater just a little bit, only one to two feet. That mask will squeeze against your face, move up against your face as you go deeper underwater. That's pressure increase pushing it up against your face. And the hard frame may not have enough clearance and hit your eyebrows or nose or your forehead. That's not a good choice. Now, if you swim down underwater, you should be able to go down three, four, five feet and then you can exhale through your nose to bring the mask back out again. So that's called equalization. The deeper you go, the more the water pressure increases and squeezes the mask up against your face. You want to equalize by exhaling through your nose before it hurts by making a collision with your head. So once you dive down, you're going to want to be able to go down three, four, five feet before you have to exhale through your nose, but you don't want it to be painful up to that point. So this time, test number two, you're going to grab the mask, and this time you're going to be kind of brutal with it. You want to grab that mask and press and move it up against your face. You can suck and press and pull it up against your face. Now, all we're concerned about is eliminating masks that hurt when you move it just a little bit. If you move it a lot up against your face and it hurts, that's okay. You're going to exhale through your nose and equalize before it gets to that point. So we're going to press and suck, and if it moves a little bit and hurts, that's not good. If you move it and press it a long distance and it hurts, that mask is still acceptable because you're going to exhale through your nose to bring it back out again before it hurts. So those are two steps I found make a big difference in trying to choose the right mask. Test number one helps you figure out which ones will fit your face and seal very easily. If the mask is too small and you have to work to get into it, it's not a good choice. If you have a narrow face and you choose a big mask and it has gaps on the side, that's not a good choice. Finding one that fits the unique size and shape of your face is very important. The second test, the squeeze test I call it, that one might eliminate some of the masks that you tried in test number one. Then it's a good idea to go back and revisit the masks that you tried in test number one and see which one really seals the easiest with the least amount of effort. Maybe that might help you get a better fitting mask. 
Let's talk about snorkels for a moment. I found there's not one best snorkel for everybody out there, but there's probably a best one to fit your personality in the ocean. For instance, some people have grown up in the ocean and they're used to salt water in their mouth and in their snorkel and they don't mind. They just blow it out and continue their dive. But I get a lot of people coming into the store that don't get in the ocean very much. They're not maybe very comfortable there and they absolutely do not want salt water in their snorkel or in their mouth. Not acceptable. There's a lot of people that go out swimming around looking at the fishies and they just paddle around slow enjoying the sights and they don't breathe hard. There's not a lot of exercise value there, but they're enjoying themselves and that's what it's all about. And then I go out there swimming in the ocean with my mass snorkel fins and I swim as hard and fast as I can. I'm getting my cardio exercise. I'm breathing hard and I'm getting a lot of airflow. I'm huffing and puffing a lot of air. Each one of those four personalities will want a different snorkel. So let's talk about some of the features that show up on different snorkels and which one might fit your needs best. This is probably one of the most simple basic styles. It's just an open tube on the top and if a wave goes over the top while you're on the surface, all the water that goes in there goes into the snorkel and into your mouth. Now you got to deal with that. A lot of people don't mind that. A lot of people, it's not acceptable at all. The reality is you just have to blow through your mouth and the water goes out this little one-way valve down at the bottom. It's a little silicone flapper valve and the water dumps out the bottom. But again, that's just a little more advanced for some people. This snorkel has a dry valve on top. There's a float with an air hole closure device and as the water level rises, the float rises and it closes off the air hole. This works really well. I'd sell this snorkel to people that don't want water in their mouth and they come back the next day to say that they had waves crashing over the top and no water came in. They swam under, came up and started breathing. There was no water in there. This is a wonderful invention. Why wouldn't everybody want this? Well, remember I mentioned that I go out swimming and I'm huffing and puffing tons of air. It's like if I'm running uphill for a mile, I'm getting a maximum effort in and I need a lot of air. This has a big tube to breathe through, but look at the small size of the air hole in here and that doesn't work for me. Now, for the average person who's just out there swimming around looking at the fish and having a great time, they get plenty of air. So this is not a problem, it's just it doesn't meet the needs for my high performance exercise workout. I like to use this snorkel. This is called the Impulse 3. This has got a huge open airway. Lots of air can move through here. There's no mechanical valve up here, but there's a baffle system built into it. So if a wave goes over the top and I'm on the surface, I'll pause for a second while the water is up high and water that goes in there, virtually all of it drains out down there. If I do get water inside the snorkel, just blow hard through the mouthpiece and again, the water dumps out that little one-way valve down at the bottom, very easy to clear out. I love flex hoses on snorkels as opposed to a rigid tube. Sometimes on a rigid tube you might feel the snorkels kind of pull on your face as it's attached to your mask. The flex hose is much more comfortable. And when you come to the surface to say to your dive buddy, hey, did you see the big turtle down there? This will drop out of the way so you can speak clearly without it being stuck right in front of your mouth. So there's lots of different types of snorkels, but I don't think there's one best one out there. There's one that's best for a particular person. and You have to look at your personality. The one that I like works greatest for me, but if I swim underwater, it fills up and that's not acceptable for a lot of people. So find a snorkel that's going to fit your personality. That's the most important thing. Let's talk about fins. There's basically two styles of fins out there for the most part. Some of them have an adjustable strap and if they have an adjustable strap, it's also required that you wear a neoprene rubber boot because the foot pockets are often very uncomfortable. So this is an adjustable strap fin. There's a few that are light duty, smaller snorkeling fins that have an adjustable strap and they don't require a boot. Very important you find out from your dive shop which style fin you've got. This is a typical snorkeling fin. 
a bare foot goes in here. You don't need a boot. Very important that you get the right size fit though. That's the critical issue. There's that word fit again. Very important to get the correct fit. Now with a fin like this, a lot of times people try them on and if they fit properly, the first thing they say is, they're too tight. And I found over the years that if people wear a fin that's loose and really comfortable, their foot may slide back and forth inside when they're snorkeling and they'll get blisters and sores on their feet. So sometimes people say, I don't like this kind of fin because my foot gets hurt in it. Often that's because they borrowed a set of fins or rented some from someone that made it too loose and their foot slid around and they got the blisters. If this fin fits you properly, then it's gonna be very, very snug on your foot. Now when you're evaluating the fit and the feel of this fin, I'm gonna put this fin on my foot right now. Very important that you wanna make sure that it's in the proper position to evaluate the fit and the feel. Often, I find people put the fin on and then they stand up in it and they say it's not comfortable at all. Well, you don't use your fins by standing in them. Use your fins with your toe pointed like this and you kick from the hips. Your knee should not be bent hardly at all, but you kick from the hips. I see people in the store all the time going like this. You can't do that in the ocean, so why are you doing it here in the store? So evaluating the fit and the feel of the fin when your foot is pointed in the type of position that you'd actually use it in the ocean is very important. And again, I always like to recommend that with a barefoot fin, you get it as absolutely snug as you can stand it and still be comfortable. Most of the time people are used to shoes which are loose and they're really, really comfortable. So when they come into the dive shop, they expect the fins should feel the same way. That's not true. A good fitting fin is gonna become an extension of your foot your, and your leg, and it wants to be very, very snug so you don't slide around inside. So get the right fit. Again, fit is that critical word, and you'll probably be happy with your fins.